Today, our focus is on PayPal that reported before the market opened, and we can clearly see there were some very strong results. It is up over 8% with the market just being open for a few hours. And when we take a look to see exactly how it was, well, clearly the headline does show their profit forecast for 2024 has been increased for the second time. So always great to see when guidance is raised does mean that they are beating their own expectations internally. When we look at the actual numbers, we can see their earnings per share around 119 for the quarter, significantly better than the 87 cents that we did in fact see for the same quarter last year. And their total payments volume, which is one of their key performance indicators, is up around 11%, as well as their top line revenue up high single digit at the 9% level. So lots of great news, especially when we do look at the numbers. A few other things to point out that investors were concerned about. First one is the total payments volume, which was up around 6%, a lot better than what investors had believed the numbers would show, as well as the transaction action margin dollars up around 8% in the quarter as we can see surpassing the expectations of a nearly 1% gain. Now final thing that we will just touch upon here is that their operating margin was also up. If you're a regular on this channel you know we like to focus on the margins as well as the revenue. We want to see revenue increases as well as operating efficiency and it is up 231 basis points to around 18.5% for the quarter which they do thank the cost cutting as well as the restructuring for a lot of that increase. Now another thing that we want to just point out is in terms of the guidance that they have increased for the second time in 2024 and as we can see in April they were expecting the full year earnings per share to be around 365 now they're anticipating it to be higher around 388 to 398 marginally higher than what they saw for the full year in 2023 in terms of the non-gap earnings per share growth as well low to mid teens where in actual fact earlier in the year they had only thought they would see around mid to high single digit so nice increases across the board for paypal they also beat earnings estimates both on the earnings per share as revenue and on top of that something the market always loves to see is when they raise their full year guidance as we mentioned something paypal have now done for the second time in 2024 now look it is around an eight percent gain on the day but understand over the last 12 months it is still down around 16 percent and over the last 10 years we can still see it is some way away from its all-time highs at around 308 dollars pretty much around three years ago now what we also note it is trading in the midpoint of the 52 week range it does get the double buy rating with the hold from quant and now has a forward piece sitting around 14 smp for those that are interested sits around 23. now we also want to take a look at the company's financial metrics how strong they are the first one we always love to draw your attention to the free cash flow per share we want consistent increases over the longer term now it's more than doubled from 2014 always nice to note and is expected to increase very rapidly over the next 12 months continuing the upward trend that we can clearly see Second point to note, the sales growth, nice to see double digit growth for the majority of the last 10 years, but do understand over the last two years, this has come down to the mid high single digits at around 8%. So bear in mind their top line growth at a double digit rate may have started to cease. And now we are seeing this even on a trailing 12 month basis as well at that 8% level. Numerically speaking though, we do see some very strong historical growth, eight to around 30 billion in 2023, so nearly four times over the last 10 years. What they've also done and continue to do even in 2024 are those share buybacks that you can see historically it hasn't been that consistent and fairly trivial. Hopefully they can continue to do this at a very rapid rate, especially because management do now believe that their own company is severely undervalued, as has been denoted by the amount of share buybacks they're continuing to do on a quarter on quarter basis. The next metric, ROIC, one of our favorite metrics, 10% or more or as a pure minimum, just to give us faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. And what we can see pretty much around that level year on year, in fact, increased from 12% in 2014 to 15 in 23, with the trailing 12 months showing a nice 16% rate. Operating margin as well and the free cash flow, we want to see a minimum of 16% on this side. We can see it has straddled around that year on year consistently and the free cash flow margin looking very healthy as a minimum 5 to 7%. We're seeing well above that on a year on year basis. 14% even being one of the lower years still looking very attractive as a consideration for the portfolio. 
We then move on to the final metric, the net debt TBITDA, the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, which also correlates to the balance sheet strength, pretty much zero across the board. Now, what these numbers effectively tell us are the number of years it would take PayPal to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Pretty much over the last 10 years and over the next 12 months, it is estimated to not even take them one day, so looking very, very strong. The next thing we want to look at is both insider and institutional movement. The first one being insider ownership around 0.14%. We note around 5.2 million worth of sales by these insiders over the last year. Although we do note that in the more recent quarter, Q3, no movement so far. In the previous quarter, around 273,000 worth of sales. And in Q1, slightly higher at 466. Now, in terms of who these insiders are, we can actually see the more recent sale was from the director, but that was the 24th of May. So you could argue a little bit outdated to consider, but for transparency, we're just showing over 4,400 shares sold, average price, which is now lower than the current trading price, and total transaction, 272,000. As always, you can see the buys and sells, although they are pretty much sales across the board. And just so you know, we don't believe this to be a bearish indicator inside a cell for many reasons, whether it's personal or financial. Institutional ownership just over 68%, 7 billion worth of sales over the last year, with half the amount of buys over the same time period. And when we do look at the more recent quarter, Q2, we do see nearly double the amount of sales than buys, and that is the same for Q1. So we're seeing insider selling, we're also seeing institutions selling more than they are buying. But as always, do your own due diligence and never rely on them as part of your investment decision, although you can take a look just to consider as a wider element of your total thesis. We just want to let you know we have released our latest articles, with this one being for those of the paid subscribers, and we go through August undervalued stocks, and this is an example of it. We have 35 that we have considered for this month, the first one being Visa, and for each of these, we do talk about whether or not they're in our portfolios. As we said, you can join by clicking on the pinned comment below, and for those who want the free subscription, we do have many articles that you can read straight away, so do sign up by clicking below. The next thing we want to point out is just at a high level, not the revenue that we have covered, but also their bottom line. As we mentioned, revenue has been consistently growing at a very strong rate, but is anticipated to slow down into the single digit as we have seen 8% over the last two years. What we want to see is the story on the bottom line. Is it very similar? Well, 419 million in net income in 2014, 4.2 billion in 2023, so pretty much 10 times over the period. But we do note a little bit of inconsistency on a year on year basis, so something just to bear in mind. We then take a quick look at the health of the company, total cash versus total debt. It's sitting at 2.2 billion in 2014, 14 billion in their latest report. So their cash balance has increased seven times over the longer period. And we can see the trend, it is increasing over the last 10 years. Now in isolation, as always, that number tells us nothing, which is why we compare it to their total debt numerically and directionally. And as we can see, it has increased from around 1 billion to around 12 billion in the latest period. But we already note their cash balance is much higher than their total debt, which is why we saw that net debt to EBITDA sit at zero. And we can see that trend. Whilst it has been increasing, the cash is larger and has increased at a much rapid rate. The next thing we want to look at is the earnings quarter and historical versus future performance. Now quarter two, they did just report. So they did have a earnings beat, which is always great to see. So if we look at the last four quarters, that will be a 75% record, three beats and one miss. And when we look forwards, they are anticipating the next two quarters to effectively be double digit decrease to the earnings per share with quarter one of 2025 starting to show some room for growth at 2.15%. Now, if they do manage to hit those estimates of 4.59, ultimately the forward P will drop to just below 13. Again, depends on if you have that confidence with their targets and estimates. We're then going to look at some gradings. The first one, the valuation, where they do get a C minus. What this tells us, well, firstly, in terms of the P non-gap forward basis, it sits at just over 14, where the sector median trades around 12. So you are paying a premium right now for PayPal at around 19%. And that is pretty much consistent no matter which metric you use. This is a company, although very marginally, not massively, does trade at a premium to the sector. Now it is up to you to decide whether or not you believe it is warranted. 
justified and that is something we can add to our margin of safety. The next thing we look at is the growth grade where we can see they get a C plus year on year growth around 8% sex and median around 4.63 so nice to note larger growth moving forwards around 8% again marginally higher than the sector and when we look over the next three to five years they're expecting to increase their earnings per share at around 8.3 percent when the sector is marginally higher so not the greatest whilst they do have a larger growth to their top line the earnings is looking to be growing at a smaller rate than the sector finally then for gradings we move to profitability where they do get an a as we can see gross margin 39 percent they in fact get a d plus much lower than the sector median of 60.5 percent and the same can be held true for the bottom line net income 14 percent versus the sectors 23. now we do have a redeeming feature here that their cash from operations is significantly higher at 5.6 billion than the sector at 158 million now a quick wrap up for this part of the analysis a double buy with the hold from quant a C minus valuation, C plus on growth with the A on profitability. Now, how have they formed against others in the sector over the last 10 years? We have others in the transaction and payment processing services, Fidelity National Information Services, Block, Aiden, as well as a few well-known others that we have pretty much covered all of these on the channel. So over the last year, PayPal is down around 16%. And what is interesting to note is that four of the six have had negative performances over the last year. When we expand this to over the last five years, again, we do see the majority down the negative, PayPal negative 43%. And when we expand it over the last 10, we actually note 82% increase from PayPal. Now that's still not the greatest return over a 10 year period, but as always, past performance is not an indicator of future performance. Now this effectively takes us on to the valuation. As always, if you do enjoy the content values being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So our intrinsic value of $74 isn't dissimilar from Wall Street of 75 where they see 17% upside over the next year. And how we got to our valuation of $74, we ran it through three models. The first one, Graham's valuation, where we have an intrinsic value of around $61, $62, showing overvaluation. Bear in mind that we don't look at any of these models in isolation. We then have the multiples valuation model where we can see those that we did compare it to the average multiplied by the EPS per share to get another overvaluation signal. Today, we didn't use the dividend discount model as they don't currently pay a dividend. So the final model we used was the DCF model, the free cash flow year on year with the average growth rate. Now we've gone very conservative at 5%. With the discount rate at 8%, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value and divide by the shares outstanding. And we can see a very large undervaluation signal. Now, this is why we did run through all three models, because some people will prefer just to use the DCF model. And we can see on a very conservative estimate of 5% that this is valued at over $100, which is nearly a 100% gain. But as always, you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below and running in your own numbers, whether it's for PayPal or any others that you do want to consider. Now, intrinsic value of $74, current price around 64. We always use a margin of safety. And today we start off with 10% and we execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. Now, if you believe that, look, it's a buy up to $67. Then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And you could argue in today's episode near a 15% MOS with Wall Street considering a 17% upside over the next year. Now, for those that do want to add PayPal but want to add a lower valuation, at 20%, it would be $59. And at 25 around 56 But as we mentioned in today's episode, pretty much a 15% MOS level. As always, though, do give us your thoughts below. Is this one that maybe you have held, you've seen a nice gain and you're considering selling? Maybe you're looking to add more after some very strong earnings. Or maybe for now, it is sitting on the watch list. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter so you can have access to more undervalued stocks that we do consider attractive for the month of August, as well as joining the Patreon if you want to talk about our weekly buys and sells. As always, if you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button, and we'll see you all on the next one.